Hello everyone and welcome back to the only series out there that combines the lore of Magic the Gathering with the physical cards you can win. I'm Simon and this is Friday Night Lore. So I'm going to start things off here with an apology for the lack of Innistrad related lore coming out recently. A lot's been going on with the battle for Zendikar, so I'm kind of bogged down by that. Don't worry though, Innistrad content will be coming in more regularly, especially as the BFC news starts to thin out. I'll also be keeping Friday Night Lores focused on Innistrad for a while, so you're guaranteed at least one video a week. For this week's FNL, I want to focus not on a singular character, but rather an entire race found on Innistrad. Let's take a closer look at the werewolves of Innistrad. Lycanthropy, a curse. The very mention of this disease to the people of Innistrad would instill fear in even the most battle-hardened warriors. Not many know how it works or how the curse came to be, only that those inflicted by it transform into monsters. Those suffering from lycanthropy can appear very human at first glance because, in essence, they're still human. While in their more civilized state, werewolves are no different from mere you. Many sufferers even try to live their lives, utterly denying their disease. Lycanthropy weighs heavy on the minds of those who carry it. The victims fill with doubt of his or her own urges and instincts. They typically become outcasts, abandoning their own families in fear of what could come with their transformation. Many others find hope in the religion of Avicen, but prayer and personal restraint can only skew when a person transforms, not cure them. The church believes that werewolves are in fact the result of demonic possession, but no amount of exorcism has ever cured a victim. In truth, the curse is transferred to people by those carrying the disease. It's not totally understood how this is done, but many alchemists believe it's spread through blood. If an individual is bitten or cut by a werewolf, they will likely suffer the disease at some point in their life. Lycanthropy is a supernatural curse and causes the victim's spiritual essence to become mingled with the wild essence of nature. The victim, in effect, has two souls. These two essences constantly battle for control within the sufferer. When the wild wolf essence triumphs, the werewolf change occurs. This may explain why werewolves hunt humans so often. The wolf essence desires to destroy the human side and triumph over humanity and does so symbolically by brutally slaying humans. The best way to fend off a transformation is to reaffirm the humanity of the victim. The more time a sufferer spends in humanity, thinking about consciousness, morality, and what it means to be human, the less frequently they seem to transform. The curse also seems to respond to holy objects and symbols of Avicen. While in the presence of blessed objects, priests, churches, or with regular praying, a victim can hold back the wild essence. But as said before, a werewolf will always, eventually, transform. No matter how hard a victim may try to stay back the wild spirit of their disease, one thing will always guarantee a transformation. The moon. The cycle of Innistrad's moon seems to play a huge role on the werewolves of the plain. A full, silver moon in the night sky has the potential to change every sufferer of lycanthropy into a werewolf. The moon also plays a role in the larger werewolf societal dynamic. The phases of the moon often predict when and where halpacks will hunt. It can even determine which halpack would be dominant in any given area. Some packs are more successful hunters under different moon phases. The majority of werewolves on Innistrad can be found in the province of Kessig, the sparsely populated countryside of the plain. The thick woods and abundance of human-run farms make it an ideal environment for the hunters. Even trying to enter Kessig causes travelers to go through Ulvenwald, the misty wood, a dark thick forest crawling with werewolves and other supernatural beings. Ulvenwald isn't the only area plagued by werewolves in Kessig, however. Near the countryside are the Lambholt Pastures, vast areas of farmlands near the edge of the forest. A simple place which provides the werewolves with a simple meal. Even Avabrook, the once county seat of Kessig, fell when Avacyn's magic started to wane. Now the city lays in ruin, renamed Hollowhenge, the lost city, overrun by werewolves. 
and these are just a couple examples of an area terrorized by these vicious creatures. These areas are dominated by different Howl Packs, groups of werewolves led by an individual alpha. These packs are highly territorial and often get into feuds with one another. Although all packs and werewolves may appear similar, they're actually very distinct. For example, the Mondronan Howl Pack's territory is that of Hollowhenge. They are a relatively small pack, led by their alpha, Tovalar. They use a special and odd blood ritual as a type of magic, which makes them more dangerous than traditional werewolves. While the Lirug Howl Pack roam all throughout Kessig, but are far more ferocious. Led by the evil she-wolf, Skahara, the pack often targets children and their families, looking to end an entire bloodline with every hunt. This is the life of a werewolf on Innistrad, humans doomed to act on their natural urges to kill by taking on the very form of mirthless slaughter itself. This is the true nature of lycanthropy. But this grim fate wasn't the end for all sufferers. Avacyn the Angel eventually returned to the world and ushered in the power of the Curse Mute. It was a powerful and holy spell which restored all of the angels' lost wards and protective barriers. It also ended many horrible curses which had plagued the people of Innistrad. Yet the curse mute did not cure those with lycanthropy. The nature of the curse caused an unfixable tear in the soul of its victim. Avacyn could not remove their wild spirits, but she could offer them another solution. Avacyn could take the split soul of a werewolf and forge it into a single entity once again. It would restore the person's humanity, consciousness, and give them back everything it means to be human. The problem with this solution was that it left the victims in a permanent werewolf state. Although they were human in heart, mind, and soul, they would forever appear as werewolves. Avacyn didn't force all werewolves to take this quote-unquote cure, but offered it to any and all who wanted it. There was only a single catch. Once made whole again, the werewolf would forever agree to be a champion for humanity, protecting people against the darkness of Innistrad and serving as personal enforcers of Avacyn. Many came to Avacyn seeking her light and guidance. They became the Wolfier and were forevermore the protectors of humanity. So there you have it guys, the lore behind the werewolves of Innistrad. I found werewolves to be one of the most interestingly designed tribes in Magic's history, not to mention one of the most fun. Let me know what you think about Innistrad's werewolves in the comments below. I want to know what your favorite werewolf card was. As with all Friday Night Lore episodes, let's announce the card which will be featured in this week's giveaway. Since this week's topic focused on werewolves, I couldn't think of a better card to give out than one of the best werewolves from Innistrad, Huntmaster of the Fells. I remember playing with this guy and just having a blast, it doesn't hurt that it's also a pretty decent card. To enter for your chance to win this card, all you have to do is be a subscriber to this channel and leave a comment on this video. At the end of the week I'll use a random number generator to select a comment as a winner and announce them at the end of next week's FNL video, so make sure you stay tuned to see if you've won. Now with the conclusion of this week's FNL, let's unveil the winner of last week's Friday Night Lore giveaway. The previous FNL focused on the Planeswalker Tybalt, and so, I was giving away a copy of Tybalt the Fiend Blooded. And so, the winner of last week's FNL and new owner of this Tybalt the Fiend Blooded card is... A Cellsword. Thanks for the comment, and I'm glad to say that the Living Lore format will be a thing, but it will only serve to support this traditional series. I too hope it grows. I want to get an animator in here to give these stories more life, kind of like the animation style of Wizard set trailers. But that takes money I don't quite have yet. Maybe someday. Anyway, congratulations on winning the card. If you could, please check your messages on YouTube for a message from me. You'll find all the info I need to send you this card. And that's it for this week's Friday Night Lore, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in supporting this series. You can also support this channel by visiting my sponsor at abugames.com. abugames.com is one of the leading online magic stores and can hook you up with everything from booster boxes to singles. ABU Games directly supports my Friday Night Lore series and all my giveaways. They're amazing and I highly suggest you checking them out. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.